Good morning, folks, and welcome to another edition of the Roger Report Live, the best show on social media. If you are new to the channel, go ahead and take a moment out to hit that like button because this is where you're going to find the best content on social media, and you don't have to worry about it because you're going to have me right here to make sure that happens. And if you've already been coming to the channel for a while, then go ahead and hit that like button because you already know what time it is. And you know this is where you're going to get the best content on social media. It's not a mystery to you at this point. You've seen other people do it. You've seen other people do it well. But what you have not seen is anyone do it quite the way I do it. So make sure you hit that like button. And everyone, yes, everyone, even if it's your very first day here, take a moment out to share the content, y'all. Share the content. There are so many people who need to get great content like this. And it's just a small thing you can do to help the world be a better place. And isn't that what we want at the end of the day? Don't we want the world to be a better place? Of course we do. So share the content out. Share it through your social media. Share it through word of mouth. Or even text someone's phone. But do what you got to do to help spread the word. All right, folks. Today we are going to be talking about, about Latrell Sprewell. <laughs> The choke artist because he has the most famous choke in modern day history right now. Yeah, you know, I, I would have to say the most famous choke in modern day history when he choked a P. Lee, P. Coach, his coach at the time, Coach P.J. Carlissimo. Okay, uh, this is a choke that went around the world, as they say. All right, so. We're going to do a little, uh, we're going to dive into that discussion just a little bit. Now, I do apologize, y'all. We The show was up and ready to go, and then when there was an issue, and then I found that at the last minute that people could not see it, so I had to hurry up and rush this up. So I'm pretty sure people will be fouling in very shortly as they find this particular stream because the other one was, was compromised. I'll just say the other stream got compromised, so unfortunately we had a hiccup right at the last minute. All right. And the other one was not showing. So I had to do this quick, fast and in a hurry. But we still going to make it a great stream. We still going to make it a great stream. Now, before we get too far into this, let me thank, uh, give a thank you right away, because these are the thank yous that help a whole lot. And the people that help make a difference here at the Roger Port Live, we cannot do it the same way without you guys. And those are the sponsors of the stream. So shout out to one of my homies okay <laughs> uh one of the one of the greatest guys here in the black manosphere shout out to black mind he is the sponsor of the day stream i appreciate you big time my brother appreciate you big time you know i definitely appreciate everyone who takes the time out to give financial contributions to the channel you know i need you guys to help me justify doing this on a regular basis not that it should have to be justified but that's what the, the real story is. So thank you to Black Man. Appreciate you big time, brother. Appreciate you big time. All right, now, let me give a couple shout outs to some of the first ones to pull up a seat at the cool table. And I know it was hard to find this morning. I know people going to be, like I said, they'll be filing in late because I know this one got put up at the last moment. Uh, there was some technical difficulties. And the other one that I had, fortunately. Uh, so shout out to Jeffrey Woolen, first one here. Good to see you, my brother. Good to see you. Shout out to Afro National. What's going on, my brother? Great to see you as well. I see Wolfbane in the house. Great to see you also. Great to see you also. And I appreciate you guys representing. You know what I'm saying? Long live the habitual line steppers. <laughs> Long live niggas in the wilderness. SYSBM as well. You got, you know, <laughs> hashtag cool table. Hey, appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you. All right. Uh, <laughs> Uh, shout out to Wolfbane pointing out the obvious. Yeah, you know what? I I was late, y'all. It was um, you know, I just found out something new that uh, hopefully now that I know won't happen again. But I had a stream up. It was set to private. People couldn't even see the stream, so it was ready to go. And I found out uh, just as the last minute when I was getting on to you know right prepare right for the open. So I was like, oh Lord, I got to make a whole new one right here and right now. So. Didn't work out the way I wanted it to. But now that we know, we know. So, okay. All right. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about Latrell Sprewell, y'all. Because Latrell Sprewell basically got branded a quote-unquote thug 
when this choke situation came out. Now, you know, we didn't know the things that we know right now, you know, because people really didn't talk about it. You know, well, we didn't hear anything from the people who were involved in the situation. And and now that uh, we got an inside school, now you can you kind of understand why we didn't really hear anything about it. You know, because the players were silent. Now, of course, at the time, I didn't know anything about a gag order of any kind. So the players were silent. It's an unfortunate situation. And unfortunately, you know, the NBA gave they spin. Oh, I say the Golden State Warriors g- gave their spin with the NBA because, you know, the NBA is part of the GOAT, where well, the Golden State Warriors is part of the NBA. So they basically gave they spin the way they wanted to give they spin. Now that we know the players were under a gag order, which, uh, you know what? It seems so bogus to find out the players were under a gag order, which is why they couldn't come out and say anything. You know, now, I will say this. I will say it was good to see and find out that the um, other players on the team were in support of their of their their brothers in arms because that's what you are when you're on these professional sports teams. You're, you're brothers in arms, you know, to take the court or take the field and do whatever it is that you got to do as a team. So it's good to see that unity. But the Golden State Warriors and the NBA did they did a great job of basically kind of hiding the unity amongst black men at that particular time. I can say that they did a great job of hiding the unity amongst black men. And I guess I can understand why, because they're about that dollar bill at the end of the day. OK, a lot of folks go move in that direction. They're going to be about that dollar bill and they don't care who get hurt sometime. You know, that's just the way it is. You know, we've all had a situation where we've had no money. And you know how it is when you get some money. When you get some money, it's different than having no money. So what happens? Well, if you got some money, you know, things are things are a little bit different. Okay, then when you got no money. When you when you got some money, you know, two dollars ain't, ain't ain't such a big deal. But if you remember back in the day when you didn't have no money, <laughs> well, two dollars meant a whole lot. Okay, so th- that's the thing. You you have NBA players earning millions of dollars a, a year. You know your your uh, roster payout was in the millions of dollars, and um, you know you want to control the situation. You want to control the narrative. You want to control what people think of your team and of the NBA as a whole. Now. Latrell Sprewell, we know for a fact, did choke P.J. Carlissima. And I'm pretty sure nobody is going to really defend the fact that he choked P.J. Carlissimo without especially knowing um, you know, more details than we know right now. We're not going to say he should have choked P.J. Carlissimo. All right. But he did. And the thing is, is that did he make a wrong move? Well, technically, yes. Technically, it's a bad move to choke your coach. I will say that. Now, I'm also going to say this. Before you heard the word of P.J. Carlissimo choking or getting choked by the trails pretty well, I'm going to ask you a question. Ask this question to to yourself. When is the last time that you can remember whether you participated on the team, whether you just watched the team, you know, whether you were just around sports as a fan? When is the last time you remember a player having such an issue with a coach that he choked them? He at least even attempted to choke the coach before this situation happened. When, is the, when did you ever hear of somebody being that aggravated where they would actually choke a coach? 
Now, I'm not saying that it was right for Latrell Sprewell to choke his coach. Okay. Whatever was going on, you know, unless it was something super extreme, you just can't choke your coach. That's just something that's not done in sports. And it should stay that way. Because truth be told, there should be nothing going on in a sports situation where somebody should have to get choked out. You know, if somebody chokes you out, and when it comes to sports, you know, somebody brought something in the sports that just shouldn't have been there. That's real talk. Somebody brought something in the sports that just shouldn't have been there. Now, did PJ Carlissimo bring something in the sports that shouldn't have been there? Well, that kind of depends because if this is, you know, this is when PJ Carlissimo was just coming up to coach on the pro level and he was coaching on the college level. And when you coach on the college level, usually you're a lot older than the team. Usually you're a lot older than, than the teams you have. Now, when you coach it on the NBA level, yeah, there are coaches who've been in service as a coach for a long period of time and they can become a lot older than the actual team that can happen, but there are coaches who aren't that far away from the age of the team. You know, you know, maybe 10, 15 years, you know, we, you know, I don't, there's no way for me to know what the average is right off hand. Cause we, we would have to look at the, the average age of every team versus the average coach of every team to even get that idea. I don't have those numbers right now. Would have probably been great if I would have got those numbers, but I just thought about it. <laughs> but what kind of coaching are you doing to make one of your players want to choke you? That is the question. What kind of what kind of situation do you have to have going on that the that you, a player would actually choke a coach because this is the things about about players and coaches when it comes right down to it a lot of players have a whole lot of respect for their coach a coach is somebody who has their back usually the players have the coach back because you already get used to going out onto the field or onto the court and you put the work in for yourself your family and your coach all right, a coach is a type of position that can get you invited to somebody's funeral. Okay, if a, if a coach dies, players will go to that coach's funeral. If a player would happen to die, a coach would go to the player's funeral. Those are the type of relationships that coaches and players have. And I'm not just saying out of respect, somebody would really want to go there because they really feel something toward the particular person that died. You know, when, when you play sports, especially at a high level, and it doesn't get any higher than the NBA, you know, there, there is a bond that's, that's built between the players, and there's also a bond between the players and the coaches. These people trust each other at a high degree. Okay, they trust each other at a very, very high degree. Now, this is the thing. Should the trail spree would have honestly choked PJ Carlissimo? Well, technically, I'm going to say it's, it's, it's usually not a good decision to choke your coach. Okay, it's usually not a good decision to choke your coach. Now, what I am going to do is I'm going to give way to, to the fact that I really don't know what PJ Carlissimo said. You know, he has been accused of of un of using unsavory language before. You know, there's no way for me to know how true that is without hearing it from the horse's mouth or the people who are right there involved. But you know, everything ain't told to the public. Okay, um, is PJ racist? Because that's the obvious thing that people may go to. I don't know. He could be. There have there have if my memory is correct, there have been people who alluded or said that he could be you know I'm, I'm not gonna throw his name down without really knowing for sure but in my memory sounds like i've heard people say a couple things here or there the question on whether he's racist or not now even if he is racist and i'm not saying that he is he's still a professional and you can keep all that type of stuff under wraps while you're at work anyway so 
you know, this is a unique situation, if you ask me, because I'm I'm looking at it from both sides. What does a man have to say to well, what does a coach have to say to one of his players to make him want to choke you in the first place? Okay. What does a coach have to say to a player to make that player want to choke him in the first place? And then you got the other side of, um, you know, now everyone, you know, everyone will come down on the player, especially if he's black to say, Hey, you know, you should control yourself. You should have, you know, utilized more self-control. Uh, it was on you. Just because somebody says something to you does not mean you have to react that way. Now, according to the situation, as far as what we're hearing, because, you know, there's a couple clips, there's a couple links in the description. According to what we know, this was stuff that was building up over time. And because it was building up over time, this is not something about he's just said something at this particular moment. This is something about how he's been treating Latrell Sprewell from the beginning. Because he's the new coach at the Golden State Warriors at the time. Now, Latrell Sprewell definitely used to ball out. You know, I remember when Latrell Sprewell first came into the NBA. He was on my, one of my favorite players when he uh, first came into the NBA. This is the time where, you know, I was young, playing video games and all that type of stuff. Played a lot of, of uh, uh, what was it, NBA Live. And, you know, this is before NBA 2K took off. A lot of NBA live. And Latrell Sprewell was a coveted player amongst me and my friends. So I definitely remember Latrell Sprewell when he first entered the NBA. And he was used to he was balling out. Real talk. You know. Now, was he talked that he was gonna be the per person to, you know, carry the league once MJ retired? I'm going to say I remember his name being mentioned a couple times as far as skill set is concerned. Okay, as far as skill set. Who going to replace MJ? Well, Latrell Speedwear was an up-and-coming two-guard. I believe he's about 6'5". I don't think he's quite 6'6". I think he was like 6'5", if my memory is correct. But, you know... <laughs> He, he definitely was on the scene and he was definitely making a huge impact at that particular time. Okay? He was definitely making an impact at that particular time. And if my memory is correct, this is when he used to actually play with Tim Hardaway and he was actually playing with Chris Webber, which they were making a serious threat uh, as far as the Golden State Warriors are concerned. That, that team was, was starting to threaten people. Okay? Now, the thing is this. If you... If you are a player, again, what does a person have to say to you to make you want to choke your coach out? That That's not normal conversation. Because players just don't choke their coaches. And even as a coach, why would you say something that will make a player want to choke you out? Okay, why would you do that? You know, it makes no sense at the end of the day. Okay, it makes no sense. So, this is the thing. Um, and you know what, y'all? I don't know what's going on in the chat. If if I got if one of the uh, moderators is down there, can y'all just uh uh block uh block this person? That, this uh, I don't know what he, like he's trying to promote something. Block him. I don't know what's going on, but block him if you can. Point blank, period. Okay? Block him if you can. All right. Oh, you know what? It's somebody from, uh, it's someone from, from Twitter. It's someone from Twitter. Never, never mind, y'all. All right. Now, th this is the thing. Yeah, Latrell Sprewell definitely was balling out back then. He definitely was balling out back then. Now, uh, okay, shout out to Bad Black Gamer. Uh, thank you for the first super shout out of the stream, my brother. And I appreciate you help, for helping me get off to the good start. Uh, he says, NBA Jams. 
NBA, NBA jams. I remember that. NBA jams, the trails free well. He's on fire. <laughs> I definitely remember that. I definitely remember that. And Latrell Sprewell was definitely one of those people who you would uh, expect to get on fire. Okay? He definitely was uh, making a difference. In, and he was a young gunner of the NBA at the time before this choking incident happened to him. Okay? He definitely was a young gunner at the time. All right? Now, now that we hear a player actually give us some of the inside scoop that the team was under gag orders. Now, this is the thing, y'all. The team is under gag orders, but the, the, the players, when I say the team, I'm only talking about the players. The players were put under a gag order. But obviously the NBA was not put under a gag order or it doesn't look like the Golden State Warriors were put under a gag order. And if they were, obviously they didn't care anything about it, which meant what? They were able to drag Latrell Sprewell as much as they wanted to without issue. They were able to drag him as much as they wanted to without issue because there was no counter narrative. So now we got to hear about the trail Sprewell who's being painted to be a monster when we never really heard nothing bad about the trail Sprewell. Up until that point, I don't remember hearing a bunch of bad stuff about the trail Sprewell. And that was a player that I was excited about. He was one of the young gunners, one of my favorite up and coming players. I don't remember hearing a bunch of stuff about how the trail Sprewell was causing a bunch of problems and he was a hoodlum or anything like that. I don't remember none of that stuff. So the issue to me is the fact that, you know, the trail Sprewell, as far as we know, was basically a good guy who just could ball. Okay, he was a, a good guy who could ball. That's that's what it comes down to when you talk about Latrell Sprewell. You know, no big issues going on. Now he choked out a coach. Now I'm I'm gonna say I don't know why Latrell really choked this coach out. They said it was things going on for a period of time. But I am gonna look at the fact that if you could get an NBA player to choke you, y'all think about this. There's a lot of stuff on the line for Latrell Sprewell. Now, some people may say, well, this is just a, a this is about a guy who's being emotional. Y'all do understand men do get to have emotions, too, right? You know, we as men understand we have to keep our emotions in check for most of the time. But men do get to have emotions, too. Even a grown man gets to have emotions. Now, this is early in, uh, in uh, Spree World's career. So, you know, this is probably maybe he's 25 or under at this particular point. But men get to have emotions too. And if you pick at a man, eventually something's going to happen. Nobody can accept being picked at on a regular basis. Now, based on the story we heard in the links, seemed to me that PJ Carlissimo was definitely picking at the trails pretty well. All right. And it just came to a head at that particular point. And how did he, what did he do with the situation where well, he choked him out? Now, my thing is, I'm not going to say on a public platform, you should choke out your coach. I'm not going to do that. But I am going to say I can't understand a person picking at you on a regular basis. And I'm the type of person I do believe in confrontation. I think Latrell Sprewell's issue was the fact that people probably because this is speculation, I have to, I have to guess them in at this point because I only got the information that I had. I think part of what the Trail Speedwell problem is is that he kept being told to let stuff go, and he let stuff go on so many different occasions. And after letting go, letting things go on so many different occasions, eventually, I'm not gonna say he blew up. He did what a normal person would do. He was gonna express himself. Because we all have to do something with anger. We all have to do something with jealousy. We got to do something when we feel good. We got to do something when we feel bad. Every emotion we have, we have to do something with at some particular point in time. So if somebody's bothering you on a regular basis, even if it's your coach, it's going to be expressed some kind of way. And there's different ways people can use to express themselves. There's, there's a lot of uh, people who do art. They say they can, you know, put out their anger or the joy or their emotions into their art. Okay? That's one way they have of expressing themselves. 
And shout out to No Placeholder. Thank you very much for the super sticker, my friend. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. You know, there are there's things that 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 people can do to express. Some people say they play basketball to get their anger out. There's some people who say they play football to get their anger out. But but when people have emotions, the emotions are expressed at some particular point in time. I I'm speculating. I believe the trail spree well was done like a lot of black men being told to never express your emotions or don't do it here. Don't do it there. And then guess what? At some particular point in time, it came out and now it came out at a practice. And, and since it came out at a practice, yes, y'all, it could have been kept under wraps. It definitely could have. Think about the fact that this happened at a practice. It could have been under wraps. Now, y'all, I am talking about practice, okay? <laughs> uh, are we talking about practice? Yeah, I'm talking about practice. Not a game. <laughs> Not a game. I'm talking about practice. All right? Now, think about that. Think about that, y'all. The incident happened in practice. The incident was, as they said, in house. So, how do you have an in uh, house incident? Yeah. How, how much? How, how much? You, how much? What's your situation where you at practice? Everything's in house. You, uh, everybody agrees what the situation's gonna be. The team talks. They they have a discussion. We can't just let Spreewell get away with this. We all know this. We all understand this. We can't promote that it's okay or it's safe for a player to choke out a coach. Everybody got that. We, we're we not saying choking a coach is right. Okay, nobody's pushing that idea that choking a coach is right. But the team did come to an agreement on what they thought was right for that situation. And what was right for that situation, they agreed that a 10-game suspicion would be enough and based on Spreewell's pay, that was going to cost him about a million dollars. Now, is that a worthy punishment for a NBA player? Is that a worthy punishment? I'm going to say, yeah, I do believe it's a worthy punishment. Because, number one, it's not like we're going to have a rash of NBA players choking coaches. That's not about to happen. That's not real life. Okay? That's not real life. So, yes, you do want to set a precedent. You do want to make sure it's serious. You do want to deter other people from putting their hands on a coach in the future. Think about this, y'all. Players have issues in games where they have fights. Well, guess what? If you have a fight, you are also doing the same thing. You are setting standards about players not putting their hands on other players. That's why people get penalized when they fight. And keep in mind, y'all, when, when you are an NBA player, if you get a suspension, you don't get paid for the game that you were suspended for, suspended uh, in. You don't get paid in that game. The check you would have got for that game goes to, if my memory is correct, that check will go to NBA charities. And then, you know, they will use, that's how the NBA uses, uh, that's how they promote what they do from as a charitable situation or a charitable organization. They take the money that they use to penalize players, and then they give that away to charities. Now, does the NBA give any money away themselves as far as the NBA itself? I don't know. I, I don't know if they give any of their own money away outside of what the players have to pay for penalties. So every time somebody got suspended, y'all, the, 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 you know, they get game checks, to my understanding. Okay? To my understanding, they get checks per game. So every time somebody had a suspension where they couldn't play a game, that game check went to NBA charities. And then NBA promotes how charitable it is by giving the players money away. Now, I'm not saying that like it's a bad thing. It's nice for anybody to give charity. I do believe in charity. You know, God wants us to give charity. Okay. 
So, so I'm not saying that charity is a bad thing in any kind of shape, way, or form. I just believe charity should be recognized. And my issue with black men is that we give away a lot of charity and we don't even recognize that it is charity because we, we are basically programmed to give our money away as if we owed it to somebody. I'm not saying that's the NBA's case, but the understanding that I do want people to have is when they do give away charity in the NBA, now maybe they give away some other money that I have I know nothing about because I don't have the ins and outs of everything the NBA does. But I know a lot of the money that they're using for NBA charities are literally the penalties being paid by the players. So the, so the NBA does get to look good about how much charity is given away off the back of the NBA players getting suspended or penalized in some kind of way. So a 10-game suspension turned into something greater. Now, keep in mind, the NBA can step in and rule on a, rule on a situation. Okay? The team can can punish a player, but the NBA can also come in and they can do a punishment themselves. So keep that in mind. The, the team can punish a player, but the NBA can punish a player as well. Now, usually, at least back in the day when David Stern was running the NBA, and uh, I don't know how long David Stern's been gone. I, I believe is probably still i don't know if it was if it's been 10 years but when david stern uh handled the nba stuff when he penalized players the players did say that that uh he 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 was he was stern but he was fair that that's what the general consensus of players based on what i've heard about players talking about stern and he he was fair but he was stern and he would also give players advice so they wouldn't end up in bad situations in the future. So David Stern supposedly was a pretty good guy about these situations. Now, I do believe that. There's no reason for me to believe that all these players would just lie for no reason. Because I've even heard retired players say this stuff about them. And, you know, if you're a player that's still playing, I get why you would say good things to protect his image. But if you're not playing anymore, well, there's no reason not to tell the truth. So I can believe that stuff. I, I don't think it's unreasonable to believe that David Stern would be fair. Now, I think the issue in this particular situation, this happened in practice. And because it happened in practice, who needed to know? Who needed to know, y'all? This happened in practice. Who needed to know that this whole choke situation even happened? Nobody needed to know. The, the Warriors organization could have did exactly what they said. They could have just kept it in-house. They agreed to the 10-game suspension. The 10 games should be enough. Now, 10 games is going to cost you some money. Let's let's keep it real. It's not like 10 games don't mean anything. 10 games is going to cost you some money. Okay? But even though 10 games is going to cost you some money, it's not voiding out your contract. So now David Stern, somehow he finds out, they hit him with a year. 10 games is 10 games. A year is 82 games. It's not the best situation. Not the, <laughs> That's not the best situation to deal with. Now, I can't trip because, uh, you know, I can't say he shouldn't have got punished. I, I can't say he shouldn't have got punished. You know? Is it PJ's fault? I'm not gonna say it's technically his fault because you know the trail freeway is in control of the trail freeway. PJ Carlissimo is, is in control of PJ Carlissimo, but 
bro, if you get a guy to choke you, <laughs> especially back then, bro, I don't know what you're doing. But you obviously you're doing something wrong. That's all I'm saying. You're doing something wrong. I don't know what you're doing wrong, but you're definitely doing something wrong for a guy to want to choke you. Now, according to the story, uh, who was that? Uh, Bimbo Coles that was in the in the link. Coles gave the story. He said, "We agreed to keep this a secret. By the time I get home, this stuff plastered all over the news." Who y'all think told? Who do y'all think told? Practices, NBA players. I don't really hear reporters going into practices that too often. That's kind of a rare thing. So who really is at a practice? NBA faculty, NBA staff. You know, limited, limited, you know, faculty and staff, mainly the players, mainly the coach. Now, everybody agreed not to say anything, even before there was a gag order. They agreed to not to not to say anything. This man said, by the time I get home, it's all over the news. Now, I'm going to say this. If this is the year, P.J. Carlissimo is just coming in. So I guess they're trying to establish he's going to be the head coach. And they're trying to establish what his power position is. You know, I'm thinking P.J. told. Now, I don't know that he did it. Okay, but if I just got to take a guess off hand on who told, who who's the one that plastered this? Who the one that started giving this information out so it would be plastered all over the news? It's, it either was PJ or the Golden State Warriors. Because the players got told to be quiet about it. The players said it's cool. And I'm going to think about this too as from a player perspective. And this is back in the day when you know, players used to have to go to college first, you know, not just for a year and then they done. But, you know, players would put in usually three years in college before they come into the NBA, depending, depending upon how good you were. Usually a lot of players would, would play three years in college, then they would become an NBA player if they thought they were good enough. So you had people a little bit older. Now, if I'm a player, how does it help me to tell that – uh you know, Latrell Sprewell just choked out the coach. And think about this, y'all. Latrell Sprewell is the best player on the team at this point. Think about it. Latrell Sprewell was the all-star at this point. You know, when this choking incident happened, I'm not, you know, well, you know what? I would have to. I would have to look. I don't know if Chris Webber was still there at that particular point. I'm pretty. I, I think Chris Webber had already been moved, maybe. And if Chris Webber was gone, then Spreewell was definitely the number one option. And if Chris Webber was there, then he's the number two option. Now I do believe that uh, Latrell did play. He played some time with Tim Hardaway. Tim Hardaway was definitely a star, but when it comes to the, you know, who was really balling out, Tim would be like number three. You know, it would be Chris Webber, Latrell Sprewell, then Tim Hardaway. You know, because I'm pretty sure M now Mullen was Mullen still on that. I, you know, I got I got to look up the roster for that particular year. Okay, but we know. Um, this is when Latrell Sprewell ha had already become an all-star. So he's basically option one. Now, as a player, why would I tell on him so he can get in trouble so he's not going to be on the team, which damaged me trying to win? Think about that, y'all. Why would I tell on Latrell Sprewell to a bunch of strangers or people in the, in the news media 
so they can do do what they what we know they're gonna do they in the news they're gonna tell people and what is that gonna do when the story get out it's gonna hurt my team in some kind of way because what do i know for sure we already know we've already discussed Latrell Sprewell is getting suspended. I already got a deal with no Latrell for 10 games. If I tell one of these re reporters, it's going to be way more than, than missing just 10 games. At that point, it's going to be missing a whole lot more. Now, I'm not going to say people would have known that it, it would basically knock them out for a year. But, but you would know that it would be a significant amount of time that he would get knocked out. Okay, you you would know that. You're you're not a complete idiot. I mean, you're a grown man, you're playing in the NBA. You know this is going to be a serious situation if it got to the public. So, everybody agreed to keep it quiet. So who told? Okay. Now, I could just say the Golden State Warriors, but everybody technically is affiliated with the Golden State Warriors. So is it players or is it management? Now, I guess that's the best way to separate it at this particular time. Is it players or is it management? Because I don't think the janitor knew. Okay? I don't think the janitor knew. I, I don't think the people who work at the concession stand, I don't think they knew either. Because why would they know? Okay? Why would they know? There's no reason for them to know. They wouldn't even be at work at this particular time. This is practice. Nine times out of ten, this is a practice that happened in the daytime. Why am I saying that? Because Cole said he went home. Why would he go home and then go back? Because if there's a game, that means that game's happening later that night. They're not doing a practice right before the game starts. So other people wouldn't even be at the location. So what's the situation? The situation is you have a you have a you have a team with a top player who has an incident. Y'all have already agreed amongst yourselves that you know 10 games would be enough. And then for whatever reason you want to tell people, you want to tell people and and stop that from being enough. You know, it's it's a shame. You know, it's definitely a shame. Give me one second, folks. Sorry about that, folks. Sorry about that. Yeah, now, yo, you want the trail spree well to do well on your team. Okay, you want him to do well. And I totally get why you want him to do well. Because if he don't do well, you don't get to go to the playoffs. It's that simple. Because why are people playing in the NBA? Yes, you are playing to make money, but there are people who are trying to earn money, and people want to win. And there's a lot of money that can be won when you're a champion. You know, things happen for you when you, you're a champion. Your, your jersey sales go up. You know, you're able to get uh, endorsement deals. You're able to make commercial appearances. Even people who don't really get no, uh, who don't really get no pub, you know, people that don't really uh get to say much or they're not really out in front, they get to make a little money if they champions, you know. They don't have a commercial about them, but they can be in a commercial. And the thing is, you got to be a champion. Now, truth be told, you know, it's on you to figure out how to be a champion. That's on you. You got to make that happen for yourself.
so I don't I don't see why in any of the in, in any of the NBA players on the roster will go out and tell anybody. You'd have to be incredibly stupid to tell anybody. Even if you're a new person, even if you're a rookie who just got out of college and you're still excited about being in the NBA, this is still your first season. Why would you even go tell something like this? Keep in mind, even if you're an NBA rookie and this is your first team, you've already been playing professional, well, not professional sport, but you've been in sports organization. More than likely at this point, you have been to college. You have played high school ball nine times out of ten. You know, it's not that many players who, who picked up basketball late and still made it to the NBA. It's a couple of them. You know, Dennis Rodman was one of them. Uh, I believe Hakeem Olajuwon was one of them. That's, a, you know what I'm saying? It's not that many people who pick up basketball late and they make it into the NBA. Usually. You have to be, you know, by the time you hit high school, you got to be a player if you're going to make it into the NBA. The NBA doesn't produce a lot of late bloomers. It just doesn't. You know, no, no matter what we say about it, that's just the way it, the way it works. The NBA does not produce a lot of late bloomers. Now, what was the bad part of this particular situation? I'm going to say this is when you start trusting white people <laughs> and things don't work out. I think, you know, the players, at least the black ones, <laughs> they said, you know what? We're going to keep it low. We don't want no problems. You know, we're going we gonna to keep everything settled. But guess what? They trusted these white folks. They made an agreement and they thought everything was going to be cool. But when you trust white people, a lot of times stuff don't work out. I'm just going to say it like that. <laughs> okay. Well, shout out to, to Joel and B. You know, when did he start playing? You know, Jeffrey Wooden said Joel and B was kind of a, another one. Late bloomer. When did he start playing? Because, like I say, usually people who make it to the NBA by high school, you are you are, you a hooper at that point, you know. So, yeah, I, th I th see. You trust white people, stuff go wrong. That's how I see the situation. You got mainly black players on the team. You know, you probably got you got a few white counterparts who probably rock out with the black guys. Y'all have y'all discussion about how this is. Keep in mind, this is very unusual back then. Remember, you haven't heard a story about a player choking the coach before this happened. When have you ever heard about this? Even if you are a player yourself and you somehow know about an incident where some player choked the coach, y'all know this never got out. So you, you can say that somebody would do that, but it never got out. We've never heard a story about a, a player choking the coach before this particular incident. Now, amongst the team and the organization, there's supposed to be some type of code which they literally said they're going to apply their code. They literally said that. Now, my question is, why would they say they're going to use the code if they're not going to use the code? Because the code was, we're going to keep it in house. I'm sure that there's plenty of times that they have meetings <laughs> You know, they have all kinds of stuff that happens in-house. The doctors don't tell everything about what's going on with the players. They keep some stuff in-house. You know, people don't go out discussing um, what the game plan is. They keep that in-house. Nobody's announcing to the world what, what sets people going to use. 
Nobody knows about the X's and O's but the players who were at the who was at practice. Nobody knows what plays we running. This is stuff that's kept in-house. Keeping stuff in-house is a regular basis. You know, it means a thing that happened on a regular basis. So, was this a situation where you have... Is this a situation when you have some sellout Negro? Do y'all really think the Butter Biscuit Brigade found out about this situation and they told somebody? Or do y'all think the, the Golden State Warriors sold out the trails free will? Was, was this... Because when I hear that this was supposed to be a 10-game suspension and everything was supposed to be fine... And then all of a sudden, everything is not fine. And now I'm hearing that, you know, by the time he got home, it was on the news. I really don't believe a player did this. I think the organization decided we want to die out of the trails pretty well so we can hurt this dude. Now, why they did that, that I, I, I don't know. And people may say that that's a large, that's a large leap. Then y'all tell me why would a player do it and why did he why was it out before he made it home? You had a person talk about this. Why was this news out before he made it home? To me, that was a very key point that he made. We talked about it. We said we got to hold him accountable. We decided 10 games. That was gonna cost him a million dollars. Uh, losing a million dollars is is a significant number to, to most people. I mean, even multi-millionaires. Notice a miss a million dollars. Okay. <laughs> That's a number to any particular person, regardless of the type of money you make. I mean, I'm pretty sure Bill Gates don't want to hear about a million dollars being lost. And he rich, rich, rich. Nobody wants to lose a million dollars, especially for for uh something that isn't a good reason. You know, and, and the trail spree already would have had to go home. And like, man, y'all, I done messed up today. I done got suspended for 10 games, and I done lost about a million dollars. That's already something to say, even if you're an NBA player. You know, it, you know, I don't think he was married at the time. He may have been. You never know. Sometimes, you know, when you're in a situation like that, you will get married early without an issue because money is not a problem. But now, if he was married, think about going home, y'all, to tell your wife I just lost a million dollars because I choked the coach out. You know, if he wasn't married, maybe he had a girlfriend at the time. <laughs> Think about going home to tell your girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, baby, I just uh, choked the coach out, and I really had to give him a piece of my mind, and we down a million. This ain't the best news that you want to tell somebody. That's all I'm saying. This is not like the greatest news. So what's going on in this particular situation? The organization must have done this. I'm going to say, if I got to bet my money, the organization did this. If I got to bet your money, I can bet that the player told. But if it's my money, I'm betting the organization damned them out. You got a new coach that don't like him. And I'm going to say he don't like him. Because if, if you're the new coach in and you have a star player that you don't get along with, I mean, there's a couple reasons y'all could not get along. But truth be told, that's just going to add to the fact that he don't like him. Think about it, y'all. What new coach don't like their star player? Even if you're a boss, you know, even if you're a boss, 
you work for an organization, you know, you come in at a very high level. You don't like your best employee. I mean, even if you're running, if you're running a business where you just clean carpets, and, and for some reason you come in as the new CEO, what new CEO wouldn't like his best carpet cleaner? <laughs> you know, that, that don't even, it just don't make sense. So I believe that the organization wanted to get behind the coach. For whatever reason, they thought they thought PJ Carlissimo would, would take him to a championship or something. I don't know what they thought. Because he was the new coach, so they did believe in him some kind of way. And it seems to me that Golden State actually wrecked their team because they believed that PJ, PJ Carlisle was going to be the one. And Era Black TV, uh, Spreewell uh, just endorsed. He didn't have nothing to do with that company from what I heard. He had nothing to do with, the, with, the, with those rims. He had literally nothing to do with it. The person who made those rims asked could he use his name, and he just agreed to it. So uh, he might have endorsed it possibly, but he had nothing to do with the creation of those pre-well rims. Okay, I do know that he was asked, could, would he put his name on it? And he, and I know he did agree to that. So he, he probably worked out some type of endorsement deal, but that's it. But see, that was that actually shows the power of Spreewell's name even back then. The name was good. The name was worth something. Spreewell was definitely making his mark. But Spreewell is still a nigga at the end of the day, y'all. And the organization just brought this good white man in. <laughs> the good white man, PJ Carlissimo. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so with this good white man, now, you know, I'm not saying it's true. Or not. I've heard some some rumors about P.J. Carlissimo and his views on race. I don't know what's true or not. But they brought this good white man in to lead this team to greatness. This is his first year as a coach. Now, of course, they ended up suspending Sprewell. Later on, he, he got traded. Everything changed after this particular incident. All the players who backed up the trail free well, who just simply stood with them, as free well basically apologized for the wrong he did at a press conference. What happened with those guys? Just as you said, they, they knew it was the beginning of the end. Now, to me, this dynamic shows a lot about the relations between white people and black people in this country today. I, I know a lot of people think a lot has changed. OK, and I'm not going to say some stuff hasn't changed. Yes, there has been some change. There has been some progress. But you got a, a nigga who choked the white man. You know, that's how they're seeing it. This nigga choked the white man. You know, this white man is not supposed to be in position that a nigga could even choke him. So we got to show this nigga what's up. Now, we're going to talk to the players, but we don't really care nothing about what they got to say. We, we really don't care what they got to say about it. We're going to make them feel like that they are part of this organization. We're going to make those players feel like they matter by allowing them to talk about the situation. But we're going to totally ignore anything that they say. Okay? We're going to totally ignore anything that they say. Now, now, why am I saying this? And people may say, well, you don't know that's what happened. Well, again, he done told us what it was. He told us they had the meeting. He drove home. You know, shout out to Bimbo Coles. <laughs> he said he got to the crib and it was all over the news. So that means 
It wasn't on one news station. He said it was all over the news. That means information was released by the team. And I'm saying the team in speculation because I don't think a player did it. Because the players won't spree well to play because he's a good reason for them to have chances to win games. So the players ain't ain't tricking off like this. You know, it ain't like when you uh got a news story that the news got like a million dollars if you were get if you would allow them to break some exclusive story. They don't pay like that. I'm not saying you can't get paid something from a news organization, but you don't be hearing nothing about, you know, everybody who got an exclusive story to, that we can report on this news station. We got a million bucks for you. They ain't paying like that. They still not paying like that to this day. So the organization obviously has some other thoughts about what could and what would happen. And with what could and what would happen, somehow they thought P.J. Carlissimo was the one. Now think about it. The Warriors suck for a long time. <laughs> they suck for a very long time. Now as I'm doing this broadcast, yeah, they got they got four recent championships now. But before they won these four recent championships, they hadn't won since like the seventies. Like they they've been bad for a long time, <laughs> you know. So this move of shutting out Latrell Sprewell to me sounds like them. It sounds regular to them. Sometimes you just have bad organizations, and no matter what good they find, they somehow mess it up. And that's what I actually believe the Golden State Warriors did. Now, I hate to say it in comparison because I, I love my team, but the Chicago Bears are like that. The Chicago Bears have been messing up for a long time. <laughs> a long time. Y'all, I haven't seen the, the Bears win since I was a child. <laughs> a young child. And I, you know what I'm saying? I've been a grown man for decades now. And they they been messing up. They, they ain't won since I was a child, <laughs> you know. So I understand an organization could really mess things up for a good amount of time, and obviously that's what the Golden State Warriors was about, at least during that time. <laughs> because it, you know, now now that they under this new Steph Curry regime, yeah, they got some championships now. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a long time after Spree Wheel is gone. So, yeah, they've been messing up for a long period of time. But I guess when you make that type of money, you know, you could throw you could throw money away like that. I guess you could afford to. Just to keep a nigga in line. It was worth it to the Golden State Warriors to go through all these extra years of losing. Whatever money they would have lost because they weren't winners, all this was worth it to the Golden State Warriors. Now, I'm going to say this, y'all. You know, if you didn't know how much people are willing to pay to hate you, this should give us some level of an idea. This is like the cost of hating a nigga. You had a, a practice incident. Okay. You got a practice incident that's put out all over the news, which basically you're putting it all over the world. That the, that you had discussed with your team, the team, the team decided, okay, 10 games is enough. We can't say, you know, players could do this. We got to make it stern. And if he missed those 10 games, he was already going to lose about a million dollars. And, you know, and the team could just make some type of statement about, you know, whatever they wanted to say about why Latrell was going to miss some games. They could have made any statement they wanted to make. But no, nah, we don't want to just do that. We'd rather hate this nigga. You know, this nigga getting a little too popular. This nigga going to all-star games. People believe that he's the reason the team is shining. Could be that going on. You know, it's about the player, not the organization. You know, kind of, you know, I, I understand that 
because, you know, that's what was going on between Michael Jordan and the late Jerry Krause, who actually was a, a good at his job. I'm not saying Jerry, Jerry Krause was good at his job, but Michael Jordan had an issue with uh, Jerry Krause giving the organization a little too much credit in his opinion. And I believe the same thing was probably going on at this time. You know, the Golden State Warriors were starting to, you know, feel a little bit of sunlight on them. And I think the people involved in the organization thought Spreewell was too much of the center of that sunlight. And since we can't stand him, and he a nigga anyway, let's just let's just mess his whole career up. And the thing is, we as black men, we have to understand and we have to remember. White people can't wait to mess us up. So we really can't do something wrong like other people can. Okay? We can't do something wrong like other people can. Because I will say this. This would give us an idea of what would have happened had the white guy choked the coach. Had the white guy choked the coach, maybe it's a 10-game suspension <laughs> and it's kept in the house. Those were rules for the white people. But this is nigga. We cannot let this, this nigga get the same type of punishment that a white man would get. Now, we got to put it out there big. And since we already got the niggas under a gag order and they can't talk about it, we're not going to do any punishment. We're just going to let the NBA handle this one. Now, everybody knew back then. You know, if, if you if you're a part of the league, you know when the NBA gives the punishment out, it's always gonna be more severe than the team. That's the way the NBA always handles stuff. That's not a new thing. Okay, that didn't just start then. That's the way it always was. If if you let it get to the NBA, it was gonna be way harsher than what the team was gonna do. Everybody knew that. Everybody knew that. So it is what it is. Unfortunately, you know, even even if you work for white people, if you make white people millions or billions of dollars, it never means they like you. And I think that's a lesson that a lot of black people can really hold. You know, if they pay attention to it, they never really like you. They never, they're never going to want what's best for you. Not for real. You know, and I'm I'm saying collectively. Can you meet a white individual that's cool? I believe you can. You can meet a cool white individual. I know a, a few individual white people <laughs> that I think are all right. You know, I think those few individual white people are fine. But when it comes down to it, I personally don't trust white people collectively because they have a reputation and their reputation. And I'm not saying nothing from a personal standpoint. I'm just saying from a collective standpoint, what is white people history, especially the ones that I live amongst in America, white people's history are stealing, killing and destroying. If it's yours, they'll steal it from you. They'll even change the law to make themselves feel good about stealing it from you. <laughs> you know? Uh, they will kill you. It's nothing for white people to kill anybody they perceive as an enemy. That's been the history of this country. It's a well-documented history of white people killing black people in this country. It still goes on to this day. And they will destroy anything that you build for yourself if they, if they decide that they want it and they can't get it, or if they just don't want to compete with you, they will destroy it. That is white people's history in America. So with a history like that, there's still this stuff still goes on to this day. What is messing up an NBA player's contract? Think about that, y'all.
There's a there was an organization that was put out called Black Lives Matter, which, based on what I know about it, has pretty much amounted to be a, a great scam. That, to my understanding, some white guy put some money behind it. You know, found the Butter Biscuit Brigade, paid them to pretend like they was trying to do something for black people, and they really just got millions of dollars just to damage black people's name, to, to, to damage black people collectively, to make it seem like black people are just scam artists. You know, some some white guy supposedly funded this organization. They used the name of a movement that was a very good movement, the Black Lives Matter movement, and they created a Black Lives Matter organization to do what? Basically say don't help black people because if you give them money, they're just going to scam it. What was the purpose of Black Lives Matter other than to present black people as a scam, as a collective scam artist? What, what was the what was the goal of that organization? And then based on the stuff I hear, seemed like a white man funded it. A white man funded it to get it off the ground. That's what I'm saying. Then they started taking donations from random people just for those uh, donations to, to not be used effectively in any kind of way for it change to make it seem like what black people just scamming people and then they used a name of a movement that was doing a lot of great stuff to do what overshadow that movement to soil the name black lives matter which they have done they definitely have sold the name so what is messing up an nba player's contract it ain't much of nothing to them so, in conclusion, I guess what am I going to say? I don't care what they tell you. You got to be extremely careful about anything that says that you can trust white people. Because that, that ain't what's real. You know? I got you. You know, trust the white people is is a is a. Uh, I'm not gonna say that it's something that should never ever be done. You know, I'm not gonna say it's something that should never ever ever be done. But I will say I've had a lot of experience where it didn't help. I would definitely say that. I had a lot of experience with trusting white person does not help. I would say that. You know, I told y'all before I've worked for a lot of different companies. You know, even when it's if it's just trusting white people to pay you for what you work, you know, you work for them, you trust them to pay you. I couldn't even trust white people to do that. You know, you put hours in, you get your check, your check short. Not once or twice, consistently. <laughs> so I guess everybody wants us to believe that race relations and everything is good now. A lot of people want to believe that, you know, since Obama got in the office, everything's great. But I'm just saying, trust in white people ain't never really been that great of a thing. So now you have the, the trail Sprewell with this terrible story behind his name. You know, <laughs> which all could have been unknown to us as the public, period. Okay. Or maybe this is something we just now found out about without all this damage being done to Latrell Speedwell personally. Heck, and the way I'm hearing it, Latrell could have used that money. The way I'm hearing things about what's going on with him, he definitely could have used that money. You know? So it's somewhat of a sad situation. You know, somewhat of a sad situation. You know, but I guess since I was done this, I believe I guess I've said enough at this particular point in time because no, nobody was able to come up. And unfortunately, like I said, there was an issue with the stream where the stream was, uh, the stream with, with that I was going to do was, was already up. But, People couldn't see the stream, unfortunately. 
that was an uh, issue. And then I had to, you know, restart one right at the last second. So, and I'm, you know, obviously, you know, the, if you, if you know anything about my channel, you know, YouTube don't do the best job of promoting this channel. So for those of y'all who are, who are not in the know, make sure you do subscribe. Understand the start time should be 9 a.m. Y'all 9 a.m. We had trouble today. So, you know, I had to start it late. But 9 a.m. is the start time, and that's what should be happening tomorrow. So we're going to get the kinks worked out. We found out about a, a new problem. You know, this was a new problem that was discovered today. But now that we know the problem, we can avoid the problem. All right? So, unfortunately, a situation where, I, and again, y'all, I'm not trying to to justify what the trail free will did. All I'm going to say is, I don't know what PJ Carlissimo was doing to the guy per se, but to get a guy to choke you out, you was doing something. I'm going to say that though. I am going to say that, you know, I'm not saying it was right, but to get a guy to choke you out like that, you was doing something. You know, I don't know what it was. I don't know how many times it was. I don't know how many times you got warned, you know, but based on the way, you know, stuff got presented. It seemed like people were listening to the trip, and you would think if a player was balling out, that he would at least get enough respect from the organization that they would at least listen to him. But it just didn't seem to be the case in the trail's uh, situation. You know, so the you know the trail's real trying to just you know come to work, do his job, you know, do things the way he should do, and what did he get him? It get him. I mean, he's 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 the face of one of the worst stories in NBA history. Let's keep it real. Outside of the malice on the palace, if you think about bad things that have ever happened in NBA, you pretty much gonna think about the trails pretty well. Now, the malice on the palace. I mean, the malice in the palace. Yeah, that that was a bigger story. That was a um, you know that would be considered a worse situation. Number two, unfortunately, right now we're pretty much fall to the trail. You know, it just is what it is. And and this is something that happened in practice, y'all. Not a game. Not a game. We talking about practice. <laughs> but if you gotta trust white people to keep stuff from coming out, it's probably a bad idea. So, y'all, I'm, I'm going to leave it here. I think this was uh, enough said on my part. You know, of course, I would have extended had other people come, but they probably couldn't even find it this morning. You know, uh, you know, me and YouTube are obviously on the best terms. <laughs> it's not me, it's them, y'all. It's not. It ain't me, it's them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I ain't got no problem with it, you know, but they don't like me like that, and I have to accept that, and it's all good, though. It's all good. You cannot complain while you use a system. So it's all good. I ain't tripping about it. But, you know, now that I know about the new problem, we'll avoid that problem in the future. So I will say that, you know, stuff should be smooth and back on track come tomorrow. But y'all have a good rest of y'all day. I appreciate everybody who uh, came and checked in. And I know, you know, everybody had to come with a pretty much late start because, uh, like I said, the, I found out the stream that, that I put up last night. When y'all started looking for it this morning, y'all couldn't even see it, unfortunately. So, but that shouldn't happen again. That shouldn't happen again. So y'all have a good rest of y'all day. Long live the habitual last steppers. I'm Roger. I'm right. And I'm out. <laughs>